Three, two, one. Welcome back, everybody, to another episode of Trendy versus Traditional. We'll be cooking two different versions of your favorite classics. For today's episode, we will be making hot dogs. I don't know how much wiggle room for trendy traditional hot dogs there is. It will be a more convenient way to eat hot dogs, let's put it that way. I want to let you know I've got some tricks up my sleeve today to try and set me apart. I'm looking forward to it. See you in a couple uh, minutes, hours, days? I don't know, I gotta get out of here. <laughs> Good luck. Thank you. I have my apron on and my hair tied. I'm ready to make some trendy hot dogs. It's once again a street food item from South Korea. They're very good at creating trends. Recently, this type of hot dog, it's called kamja hot dog, which is basically essentially potato hot dog. Think of like a corn dog, but it has this like potato chunky coating on the outside and I have yet to try one. So I figured I'd make it myself. Folks, I have been tasked with tackling the traditional hot dog, but it's not just going to be a heated up hot dog in a bun. Today we are going to be making a chili cheese dog. I have eaten an embarrassing amount of chili cheese dogs. The amount of times I've sat on the trunk of my car just absolutely slamming down a foot-long chili cheese dog, you would lose sleep over it. Let's get into it. I have to make this batter that is going to have to rest for an hour. So over here, you can see this beautiful puffed up situation. It's basically just water, sugar, and some active dry yeast. And I already started off here. And in this other bowl, I'm going to add some flour and salt. So I'm gonna combine this yeast in here. I'm using a rice paddle because I'm following Mong Chi's recipe and she uses a rice paddle, so I'm using a rice paddle. So once we have that in here, just going to mix it together. She said mix for two minutes. This is how I make my base level chili. It's killer on a hot dog, and I, I feel good about this. So first, I'm just gonna get this jalapeno a little prepped here. You may notice I'm like making it nice, putting it into glass bowls, and I have a theory. Inca beats me a lot in this series, and I think it's because she does a good job of laying out her ingredients and gets the lay of the land. So I could dump a can of beans into this pot. I could just take some chicken stock out of the box and pour it in, but we're keeping it professional here, okay? I'm trying to level the playing field. This is my bread for the hot dog. I don't know what buns Chris are using, but I'm assuming it will be, you know, the buns at, at your local diner. What? I didn't say anything. I don't want anyone coming for me in the comments about how I'm chopping the garlic, how I'm prepping my little mise en place. Is it funny to all of you that I, I make a mess? Aww. It's already feeling even better, so I'm gonna stop now. I'm going to saran wrap this and set it aside, wait for an hour. In the meantime, I can prepare my potatoes, which will be the coating. All right, gang, in goes our base for the chili here. While the vegetables are sauteing, I'm just gonna hit them with a good sprinkle of salt. We're just looking for our vegetables to soften a little bit, relax, and then we're gonna start our next steps of the chili here. Okay, so my batter is actually right down here. Ta-da! And in the meantime, even before I skewer the hot dogs, I'm going to make my little potato coating. So I'm going to start by just peeling these. Our vegetables have been going for a little bit. They look nice and soft. So I'm gonna kill the heat real quick. Smells really good. Folks, the beef's going in. We're adding beef on beef. It's getting wild here. I'm going to cut these now into like little cube shapes. You don't want them too small, but you don't want them too big either. Maybe that's a little too big. That's a little too small. It's a little thick. Oh, there we go, that's better. I'm gonna put them in this bowl for now. The ones that pass the test. It's probably the slowest way to cut potatoes. Gosh. Break up the beef. My Twitter handle, by the way, if you wanna follow me, it's at the underscore the real break up the beef. It's not my Twitter handle, but it should be. Give that a couple stirs real quick. I'm gonna season in a sec. Anyone who thinks, oh, he's putting unseasoned beef in here. Is it gonna be unseasoned? No. Enough. People aren't talking enough about salt. Salt is good. It makes everything taste better. I don't know the science behind it, but I know the taste behind it. Water's boiling. I am going to now toss. Don't do that. I'm gonna toss these in. Peps and beef reuniting at last. In go the peps and the garlic. Give these a stir together. 
So I'm gonna go start with half of this tomato puree here. Let's give that a stir, kind of just evenly coating everything. Then my favorite part, the beans. No chili is complete without some beans. All the ingredients should be on the tinier side. We don't want big chunky chili, which is my Instagram handle if you want to follow me. This is just to help remove that excess starch. Just giving it a good stir. Look at how cute they are, little potato chunks. All right, so now I have to strain these again. I'll be right back. Be right back. One of the final steps, we're gonna add some chicken stock here to just loosen up the chili a little bit. Our chicken stock is just to make the chili a little more liquidy, kind of ideal for ladling across a hot hot dog. It's important to always carry a tasting spoon in your pocket. I swear I've had that the entire time. You can go back and look at the footage. Maybe it's there, maybe it's not. Irrelevant. I'm feeling good. Feeling good about that. We're popping a lid on this. The beans are gonna soak up all the juice. It's gonna thicken up a little bit. Then we're just gonna jump right into the hot dog and assemble this bad boy. So I have my potatoes here. I strained them again and I dried them, basically just like dabbed at them a lot with the kitchen towel. I'm gonna coat them with flour to make them even drier and crispier. This is not part of the original recipe, but I wanted to add a little bit of seasoning to it for more flavor. So this is just white pepper, cayenne pepper, and paprika. Cause I'm assuming that Chris is flavoring up his hot dog. So I, I don't want to lose out. Okay, that's pretty good. And over here, I'm just gonna skewer my hot dogs. So I'm going with chopsticks instead of skewers because this is a very heavy hot dog. I figured this would be a little stronger, a little sturdier. So I'm just going to poke into it. Ta-da! I have my hot dogs prepped, I have my potatoes. Batter is pretty much done now, so I'm gonna reset the table, set up my station, and we're ready to fry this up. Very excited, very excited. Folks, we did it. The chili is done. I'm gonna toss a lid on to keep it nice and warm. All right, take it easy. There's a new pan coming. I'm going to toss a hot dog in a pan. We're gonna crank the heat up to, to like a medium, medium high. This is probably gonna get everybody going nuts in the comments. Do you boil a hot dog? Do you grill a hot dog? Do you sear a hot dog? Everybody's got a lot of dog chatter. Woo -hoo -hoo -hoo! That's all you in the comments going wild for the dogs. I can smell the hot oil. I think I'm getting pretty excited. Welcome to my little street food stall. Okay, look at this. Look at this dough. It has totally risen. You ready? You ready? This is amazing. This is what's going to coat my hot dog. So I'm gonna go right in with my hot dog now. I'm gonna let you know how I do this. Gonna put a little bit of water in here, probably like two tablespoons or so. You toss the lid on, you let the dog kind of steam, soak up all the water inside there. Then once all the water is evaporated, you pop the lid off, the dog gets seared. It's the best of both worlds. I hear a little crackling coming out of the pan here. All the water is evaporated, and here is where the hot dog just springs to life. It, it's jumping out of the pan. Just scoop it on there. I saw that what she did that was helpful was to twirl it. So she also did say, you can go in with your hands if you need to. Okay, I know it looks a little crazy right now. It's all part of the plan, I promise. I washed my hands, I promise. So next time I'm going to put this in the potato and just glue the potato on. I should have put more batter. Oh, it's a little crazy right now. No! She made it look so simple, but it's not. That's a lot of potatoes on here right now. So I'm just going to put it in the panko now, which I was going to season with salt and pepper, but I have completely forgotten. I should have seasoned my panko beforehand, but here we are. I just wanna say, this is what it looks like before, and this is what it is now. If I fail, I have three more sausages, it's fine. This is it, it all boils down to this moment right here. Out of nowhere, I'm gonna produce this beautiful potato bun. Look how pretty this is. I did not bake this. This dog is barking to get out of this pan right now. Our hot dog's done. I had a phrase in my head of hot dog blisters. Not a good phrase, but that's the reality of what we're looking at here. This is the type of dog we're looking for. So step one, dog 
in bun. Now we're gonna do a little bit of chili here. Chili's been cooling off to the side here. We don't wanna drown it in chili. The chili is just there to like raise up the hot dog. It's there to elevate the hot dog. I don't know if anyone's ever used the phrase elevate with a chili cheese dog, but I'm going there. Oh my God, it's gonna come apart. I just know it's gonna come apart. <laughs> Seven minutes, hold on. Where's my phone? Ah, it is going crazy right now. Oh, oh! Okay, maybe my oil is a little hot, but honestly. Get a little scoop of our, our chili here. I'm gonna try and get a good amount of the juice out of the spoon here. Chili's going on. It's okay if it spills a little bit out of the sides. That's what we're going for. I have tongs now, like a professional. My corn dog is huge. I hope our judge is hungry because the ones I see on the streets are like so cute and friendly. This is like intimidating. Inga always has a secret weapon. There's always just like a little extra sprinkle of something special on the top. I was hiding this processed, melted, beautiful cheese behind the chili the entire time and you had no idea. This is just melted cheese, a little queso-y action. I think this is what's going to set my chili cheese dog apart and likely give me the win here. Going on, they're just gonna do a little, little drizzle action here. I feel pretty good about this dog. There is a minute left on this and I just realized the reason my hot dog is so big, it's because in the original recipe that she actually only makes half of this sausage. That's why it's like a nice portion. What have I just created? Let me show you what I mean by big hot dog, okay? It looks so good just sitting here. I can make others for our judge, but I, I gotta take a bite of this one. This is actually seasoned with sugar. Kind of like that sweet and savory combination we're talking about. A little bit of salt as well. A drizzle of ketchup, a drizzle of mustard, and that's it. That's my trendy hot dog. Oh boy, it's a monster. It's great. Oh God, it's so good. I picture myself at a baseball game. It's Saturday night. I'm slamming chili cheese dogs. I eat so many of them that I make myself sick. This is gonna win. I know it. I don't even know how to eat this. Gosh, okay. Ooh. Pretty good, actually, it's pretty good. Oh my God, that crisp was, mm. And um, mm, it's like fried and hot dog. I think I might be a little more generous with the ketchup and mustard, a little more sugar maybe, but feeling good. Mm, chef's kiss, okay, I'm ready. Three, two, one. Oh, no, Sucks. not again. Sucks. It's Hot food dogs. on a stick again. What do you say we just settle this the old fashioned way and bring in a resident hot dog appreciator? Let's bring him in. Where All is right. he? Here he comes. We get so excited. Yes, I'm super excited to be. Whoa, what do we have here? Double glizzy action. The glizzy yeah. challenge, baby. Oh my God, I'm super <laughs> excited. We're going to go traditional first and we're going to see what's going on. Hefty dog. Ooh. Super traditional, like I would say. It even tastes like one of these like New York water dogs that we get from <laughs> the street in the corner or what have you. But then just with some awesome high quality toppings and that awesome canned cheese or whatever off the top that's just bang, bang. And slide this guy over and now this even has a carry stick. <laughs> I honestly don't even know where to start, so. Just oh, wow. Vic is so good at. Mm. Yo, <laughs> this is it. It's awesome because it's crispy, but then the, the potato got mushy enough on the outside to like coat the glizzy, the hot dog. Everything's super tasty. The official result of the test. Trendy's gonna win today. Oh, Trendy's gonna win. I feel so bad. <laughs> I had a feeling. <laughs> I had a feeling that's where this was going. Thank you! I really appreciate your biting ability. Thank it was you, a pleasure as always. Awesome, you. awesome. YouTube, always a pleasure. <laughs> Vic out. I really was not expecting to win. The way he attacked that hot dog on a stick, I knew right then and there it was game over for me. Okay, go. Dog's on deck. <laughs> yeah, I lose. <laughs> I lose. Okay. That's it for Trendy versus Traditional Hot Dog. In the comments, what do you want to see next? Otherwise, we will see you in the next episode.